Right, so now we're fairly familiar with the layout of Android Studio. We're going to dive deeper into how we can control and work with text. And there's a lot to cover here. So I've just zoomed in so that we can see my Hi Rob message right there. And you'll remember our component tree from the previous video. We've got our device screen as our kind of top level component. And then we've got a relative layout object, which we can't really see, but it's there and allows us to position objects within it. And then the only object we have within it is our text view, which is the one that we edited last time with the text Hi Rob. Notice first of all that a text view is different to text. These ones, large text, medium and small text, allows the user to edit text and we at the moment are just focusing on showing text to the user without allowing them to edit it. So that's the difference between text view and those ones there. So let's have a look at some of the properties down here. Now make sure that you've got text view selected and you should see all of these options. There are many, many different options there and I don't want to overwhelm you with masses of information right at the beginning of the course. So I'm just going to pick out the important ones for now. And I'm going to start with layout margin, mostly because that works in pixels. But we don't quite use pixels in Android. So let's have a look. Let's say we want the margin of this text view to be 10. 10 what, you might wonder? Well, let's just put in 10 and see what happens. Okay, first of all, notice what's happened. We've now got an invisible margin around this object. So it's 10 somethings and it's definitely provided some padding or a margin here around the object. Now you can see though it's, it's entered 10 dp for me. So it's really important for us to understand what a dp is. It's short for density independent pixel and you might see it elsewhere as DIP, short for den density independent pixel. And what this is, is a way of working with the fact that Android phones have a variety of different pixel densities and of course screen sizes. And we need to design our apps as flexibly as possible. So a DP is essentially roughly one one sixtieth of an inch. So regardless of the pixel density of the particular phone that the user may be using our app on, roughly speaking, there are going to be 160 dps per inch on this screen. So that's, that's all it is really. It's a density independent pixel. But that can be really important when you're doing accurate layouts and you need things to line up nicely. Of course, instead of setting all of the different margins, we can set just one of them. So if I make that 50 dps, then it's only indented on the left. And you can play around a little bit with the top right and bottom margins as well there. Okay, moving down, um, we can change center in parent is a useful one. So we can center horizontally. In fact, let's get rid of some bits we don't need over there. So we can center horizontally, we can center vertically, and we can do both. So the parent is this relative layout object or component up here, which is essentially the white bit of the screen that you can see there. So let's just unset that. Now I'm jumping over these ones, not because they're not important, but just because I don't want you to get too overwhelmed at a load of different um, options. So style is the next one that we'll look at. We can just start typing here, but if you don't know what sort of a style you're after, then you can click the box with the dots on. And what we've got here is loads of different styles, all of which come with the theme that we've selected and they're, they're within our app. So if I just pick a couple of random ones, there you go. So that's a larger, darker style. And then we might have something like title invoice, inverse, sorry. And that's got obviously a white coloring and a slightly smaller text. So that's how you can pick particular styles nice and easily. And that of course enables you to set lots of different options at once. And if you find some styles that you like, then you can get all of the options every time you create a new 
text field rather than having to manually edit them. So I'll just get rid of that style, send us back to normal. Okay, jumping down, I'm just going to show you background because this obviously is the background color, but there's a number of different ways of choosing the color. We can choose one of these preset colors. Any of the ones with a P for paragraph or text will do. Or we could choose one of the system colors. So any of these will work fine as well. Or we can actually pick our own color from this color picker here. So you can choose a color in one of three different ways. Let's go for a, a red background for the moment. There you go. And you can see that affects the background of that text view. I'm going to leave that there for the moment. So then scrolling down from there, we've got a few options. If we have a quick look at this minimum width, for example, then we can see how these pixels work. So let's go for 160 dps. So in this screen, we've got around 400 dps from left to right. If we just try that out. So 400 dps more or less takes us to the edge of the screen. And of course we can change them in height in the same way as well. Feel free to have a play around. We can set the padding in much the same way as we set the margin. So we could have the padding as 5 dps all the way around. So notice quickly there if you haven't been familiar with web development or indeed app development then you might not see the difference between padding and margin. Essentially padding is within the object itself and margin is outside of the object itself. So if you've got a background color you can clearly see the difference. The padding will include the background color whereas the margin will not. So let's just experiment a little bit there. Obviously if we change the left and let's say the bottom then we get something that looks a bit weird like that. Okay, so that's how you adjust the padding of your object. Obviously the text we've already put in but we could edit that if we wanted to right there. The text color works in exactly the same way as the background did. We've got those three choices of colors. I'm going to choose a blue color. Wonderful. And then I have to remember to click back on the text view after we've clicked over there. And then let's just take a quick look at text size. This is not quite as straightforward as you might think. Obviously on the one hand we can just type in 30 like that and make it a little bit larger. But if we have a look at the suggested text sizes, so these are our, all our different text sizes, we'll notice that there's a different measurement for most of them. Not all of them, but for most. So SP rather than DP. So this SP is short for scale independent pixels. And what this does is it scales up the size of whatever it is that you're setting according to the user's custom text size on their system. So if the user is visually impaired, for example, and they're looking to get all their text a bit larger, they want the text larger, but not anything else. So essentially, when you're doing measurements in Android, you'll notice that as far as this is concerned, DP and SP are identical. So if we just change that, there's no difference at all. But on a user's device, if they've set the custom text size to be higher, then SP will scale up or indeed scale down if they want smaller text according to the user's preferences. So the short solution to which units to use is to use DP for almost everything except text. And for text, you should use SP because that allows us the user's preferences to come in. Unless, of course, you want your text to be absolutely fixed, regardless of what the user wants, which may be relevant or suitable in some situations. So we've covered a lot of ground there. I'm going to give you a quick challenge to give you an opportunity to remember some of these and put some of them into action. So can you create a new label 
which has the text. I love Android and it goes all the way from one side of the screen to the other with a green background and yellow text. Okay, good luck. Go for it. All right, I hope that went well. All you needed to do was just drag in a new text view, double click to change the text. So I love Android. There are a number of different ways that you could have made it go all the way across the screen. I'm going to do it using text size. So I'm just going to experiment a little bit. 30 SP is not quite big enough. So 50 SP, I think that'll do. And then we wanted yellow text. So we can do that just like that. There we go. And a green background. Where are we? There we go. Okay. Fantastic. There we go. So I hope you manage something like that. You might even add some padding. Make sure I add it on the right thing. Just to make it look a little bit prettier. So let's try 10 dBs. I could even go for a touch more. Nope, too much. Great. And there we go. That looks great. So in the next video, we're going to look at how to add buttons. But before we do that, I'd thoroughly recommend you spend a little bit of time just messing around with these different options there. As we've seen, there's loads of different things that you can edit, and we've really only scratched the surface there. So set yourself a challenge of trying to produce something in a certain layout or style or color and see if you can do it and have a little play around with all of the options that we haven't met yet. I promise you it'll be worth it. Okay, hope you enjoy that and I'll see you in the next video where we're looking at adding buttons to your apps.